that the withdrawal of security guards in my rural home in Nyeri, in my private home here in Karen, and all officers who are close to me were disarmed and given a warning that they should not be anywhere near me. I didn't know President William Ruto can be that vicious. I am shocked by how vicious a man I helped to be president, a man that I believed in, a man that I was persecuted when supporting him, could so be so vicious against me when I'm literally fighting for my life in hospital. How cruel can a man be? You know, as we speak today, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya regarding Ashagwa has no single security officer around him. He's alone. And um, I am aware that a judge seated in Kirogoya, another one seated in Midmani, gave conservatory orders, staying the proceedings of the Senate, which effectively means I'm deputy president. But the president in total violation of the court orders, viciously, with due security around me. Again, to cripple the functions of my office, he ordered through the head of public service, Felix Koske, that all officers in my office be sent on compulsory leave. Yesterday, last night, all vehicles assigned to officers who work under me were impounded to cripple the office of the deputy president. I don't understand this level of viciousness to a man who have been your deputy, who helped you to become president, irrespective of whatever he has done. At his lowest moment in life, when he's literally struggling to stay alive, you unleash such viciousness against him. I bear no grudge against anybody, but uh, this had, had not seen that in President William Ruto. The man I'm seeing is the one is not the one that I thought that I knew. I know there was concerted effort that I should not go to Kuala for the celebration. Wilson Airport were told that I should not go through Wilson Airport. All owners of helicopters were told that I should not be allowed to use any of them to go to Kuala. I don't understand. But as I say, I want the people of Kenya to know that as I go home today, I have no security. And uh, it's good that they know. And if anything happens to me, all my family, President William Ruto must be held to account. We've made many mistakes in life. And we keep on learning. I trusted President William Ruto. The people of the region where I come from, the Mount Kenya region, trusted him. In fact, as we were preparing to go to office, nobody else trusted him. Msalia Mudavadi demanded that they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Moses Wetangula demanded that they, may, they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Um, uh, Amazon King demanded the same. Alfred Mutua, everybody else. I'm the only man who trusted him. Verbally, because we are Christians, we used to go to church together. And as a Christian, I believed a fellow Christian that he would never betray me or my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me, but I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, 
what happened on Thursday is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the president is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, feeding me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the president is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected. As a bava who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to President William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This a done thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health now has been given to one single Asian. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate, I was there day one. And even when the Speaker asked me to sit down to listen to the charges, I decided to stand up to face my accusers. I was there the following day. I was ready for cross-examination. The 11 counts is nothing but malice and fiction. It was a political game by the president to get rid of me. And looking at it, I don't think the president had any intention of ever working with me. I think he just needed me to help him win the election because of my mobilization capacity and the faith that the Mount Kenya region has in me. So I should have been given an opportunity. I have asked my lawyers and they have told me the motion was not time bound. What, what is time bound is a select committee that should work for 10 days and then report to plenary. That committee was never constituted. So this matter should have continued and waited for me. I was ready for cross-examination so that I answer those 11 counts one by one. And I'm sure, had I been given that opportunity, I would have persuaded the senators otherwise. I was not given that opportunity. When you look at the speed at which Renati Gashagwa is being held in that office, it's like the story of Simon Makonde. You remember that story? Yeah. One who died, who was born on Monday and by Sunday was buried. The kind of efficiency that has been exhibited in holding the Gashagwa out of office. 
if this efficiency was being exhibited in the management of the affairs of this country, Kenyans would be very happy. What is the hurry? The framers of the constitution gave the president 14 days to look for somebody to replace the deputy president. It gave parliament another 60 days. That's a total of 74 days. Why is a job that was prescribed by the framers of the constitution to be done in within 74 days is being done in half a day? You must ask yourself that question. I think it's being hurried to circumvent justice to avoid the courts of law from interrogating this matter and making a decision. The courts told us they don't want to interfere with the process to let the parliamentary process get finished and then go to them. We have gone to them now. It's over. The courts will interrogate the process and make a, and make a determination. But I ask that the president obey court orders. Through a court order regarding Kashagwa is deputy president. Why doesn't he have cars? Why doesn't he have security? Why has his office been uh, made dysfunctional? I think it's very important. But I, finally, I want to tell the people of Kenya that I don't feel safe. And for the first time, let me say that uh, on 30th of August in Kisumu, undercover security agents entered my room in Kisumu and bagged it.